Hello, Montclair. This is Fourth Ward Councilman David Cummings. Today, I bring you a very special event, an opportunity for all of us to learn about Montclair, but specifically the African-American community in Montclair. Over the last couple of years, or many, many years, we've become very familiar with the African-American Heritage Foundation, which is behind the, the yearly uh, parade that we have the first Saturday in June. And this group put together what I consider a remarkable piece of history. It's a placard that gives the, the traditions and the history of the community that tells the history of the African-American history in Montclair. And so I'm looking forward to this conversation today. I've been blessed to have many members who participated in this program in multiple ways. And so today you're gonna to hear from Ms. Betty Holloway, Ms. Cheryl Barber, Weeta McPherson, Ani Struther, and Robin Curry. Some of the folks who were able to join us, well, wanted to join us, but couldn't, some of Jimmy Eason is unavailable, but Jimmy has some stories that he will share at a later date. But for now, I wanna kick off the program by starting off with the woman behind it, or at least the woman I know when I moved the exhibit was quick to email me, David, there are ways to do this, be very careful. And so I must say, Ms. Holloway, I heard you. The, the tone of what you meant came through. But if you can, can you share with everyone how this project came together and what you did to make it happen? So a couple of years ago uh, was the 30th anniversary of the African-American Heritage Parade here in Montclair. And um, I had thought about, after having done some research, uh, well, quite a bit of research in, in, on Montclair, I thought the place the African-American community was worthy of a tour, that a tour would add interest. And so I thought making it a part of the 30th anniversary for the Heritage Parade would be a good idea. And I'm always grabbing Wita. And so I went to Wita and we went to the, the board. She made arrangements for us to go to the board and they liked the idea. And so we ran with it from there. So it was a tour. And it's a panel now because we decided that it was so successful that we wanted to do it a second time. Um, but COVID arrived. And so the Parks and Recreation Department for Essex County gave us a little bit of money. And they said, well, did you come up with something else? And so this was our answer to coming up with something else, to put the trolley tour on the panels. So I wanted to be clear because one of the things you said was that the tour, and I don't think people heard that this was actually a trolley tour where you got exactly. on a trolley and you went all around Montclair. What was that like? Well, it was pretty exciting. And I have to thank Jimmy Eason because he worked with me very closely. We did several dry runs of all the places around Montclair um, that we wanted to go. And so we just navigated the trip from point A to point B, and we had like three hop-off sites. And it really got to be pretty exciting. For some of the comments that I got, and you'll hear about them later, was that you know it was like strolling down memory lane. And as we were going on the tour, there were several comments where people could actually see, feel, and hear people that they had grown up with in the community. Uh, like the man that had the, the uh, three-wheel tricycle who uh, sold newspapers that was not included, could not be included in the tour, but people could actually see him driving down Lincoln Street, driving down Madison Avenue, selling his newspapers. And hopefully you'll hear um, other stories like that. But it, it was, um, the, the research um, was not that hard because I did collaborate with um, the Montclair History Center. They already had sites uh, in the African-American community on their hometown tour. Um, but uh, I was able to add about half more tour stops um, that we knew about that would be celebrated in the African-American community um, other than what they had on their tour stops. 
So that's what made it exciting. And of course, not everything is on the panel. We were not able to go to all of the sites, but we did, um, we hit the highlights. Jimmy and I on the drive-throughs, the run-throughs, uh, kind of decided, well, what do we think people will be interested in? Okay. And that's pretty much how we decided. All right, so I'm gonna tell you that um, you're talking about Calvin Jones, who uh -huh. probably and you know gave out the jet and ebony magazines every saturday um so i remember him from mission street and he was on time all the time to share you laughing but um so that that's the part of why i'm so excited about this that, that you bring that history um and miss holloway can you mute yourself real quick once you finish because next i want to go to uh, my dear friend almost a cousin but someone who, you know, shows up in church every now and then as a usher with me. Uh, and that's St. Paul Baptist Church. Give them a shout out. But that's We Tom McPherson. And We Tom, I want to talk to you about seeing your grandfather. You had mentioned, you know, him as someone you were like, you learned a lot about this from him. Thank you, David. Okay, actually, he's my great grandfather. His name is John McPherson. And as Betty said, this project um, actually emulated from the trolley car tour, and we placed information, newer information, on the panels. And John McPherson was one of those um, that were placed on the on the panel. So, um, at the time of the vision of this project, my cousin, Bobby Barton, all credit goes to him because he was actually um, actually working on the ancestor tree. So with that vision and his research, he sh shared with me a lot of articles. Montclair Times had articles for his business from 1913 to 1917. He was a excellent entrepreneur. He was a construction masonry, construction builder. And he actually built a few, it was said that he built a few homes on Elmwood Avenue. He also, um, actually he was a general contractor. Um, he did cement garages, foundation, tennis courts, concrete, um, and uh, cracked stone driveways. He did actually topsoil for um, big lots. He paved tennis courts. He um, actually created flagship flags, I'm sorry, flag so side walkways, and he graded lawns. He did many, many things. And he lived in the fourth ward. He lived on Maple Avenue. He had an office on Pine Street. The articles that he shared, I was amazed because it was almost like one fourth of a page of the Montclair Times, big articles. And today, these articles will probably cost like $400, $500 just to have that space in the Montclair Times. So I learned a lot about him because my grandfather was a businessman also. He was a masonry. He never talked about his father. I never knew that my great grandfather had was so prominent with a business, a prominent business in Montclair. So that was exciting to me to learn that and to know that it was all done from the fourth ward. So based on the way you you just described your grandfather, clearly you did some homework to um, get all that information, which is really great because I'm not asking this question or as a kind of making a statement is that, do you think you would know all of that about him if it wasn't for this project? No, um, actually with my cousin doing the research, I would have learned that, but I dug into it a little more because it was just simultaneously done at the same time, the vision and learning all about him as well. So I felt that that needed to be on one of our panels. Okay. So, so Ani, I'm gonna come to you because at the end of the day, what has been made, you did from what I understand, or you were part of it. Can you give us, um, uh, 
Can you describe to us how it went from, you know, how you actually made the, the placards and what was your thought behind it? Okay. Yeah, Miss Holloway and I worked with have worked with on many projects. We were together. We were teachers together at um, Columbia High School in Maplewood, and then um, we were uh, worked together at, at Arts High School. So, from about midpoint in my career to the end of my career, Miss Holloway and I worked on projects, all different types of projects together, and. Um, some of them were uh, um, scholarly projects. Others were projects that were creative. Some of them were things that were a benefit to the community and others were personal projects. And um, so it was a, a, a very, we, we've had a long history of working together on um, semi-professional projects in um, when she did the uh, history tour, um, she asked me to come in and do a talk on some of the creative aspects of the history tour. Um, I talked about the um, the painting cycle at the at the funeral home, and I talked a little bit about the architecture in Montclair, and. Um, uh, various other uh, aspects of the tour that would have been required some some creativity. And then I also consulted with her about different kinds of ways of, of organizing the tour. So we all, we've worked for years kind of hand in hand on different types of projects. And when um, the idea, when she got the idea to get a grant from the uh, the county association, to create uh, these panels, which was really um, a, a, a graphic representation of the history tour. In other words, for those people who could not go on the history tour because it was canceled, she made these uh, really a graphic that covered many of the aspects of maybe more of the aspects of the history tour. And um, she did the research for it. She wrote the grant materials and got the grant, um, a, a, a partial um, payment grant from the uh, Essex County um, Parks and Recreation Association and um, partnered with uh, the African American History um, Museum and with other organizations and um, asked me to come in and help her to design it. Uh, actually, she did all of the 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 legwork and all i had to do was come in and um help design the panels that's something that i do have done a lot throughout my career as an artist and as an art teacher laying things out for publication um and so we laid the took all of our her research um laid it out both visually and um and uh, intellectually, in terms of the the pick type faces and titles, and then um, actually physically laid these things out on large sized pieces of paper that would have simulated the size that the panels would have been. So we actually had a graphic representation of what the panels would look like, and then she took them to a print her printer and her designer and her printer and designer plugged everything else in. So the printer and designer did a lot in that she um, matched up type faces and um, suggested the substrate that the materials would be put on, um, what would be the best, best substrate for um, the, the um, application of the design and that it, where it could be, how it could be transported from one place to another, um, design the colors and really actually did an awful lot of the designing and consulting work on this. How long did it take you? Well, I mean, from beginning well, to- Well, back and forth, we worked for most of the summer for about three months. Okay. So uh -huh. Ms. Holloway worked a lot longer on the research. Right. This was really her, her um, you know, labor of love to Montclair. 
And it was my labor of love to, to her to kind of come in and do whatever at, at whatever aspect that she asked me to work with. Because as I said, we worked on many projects together. And whenever uh, she asked me to do anything, you know, I'm a, sort of obliged to do it. Right. So it's a, hopefully it, when I need something, she's obliged to do it too. Right. So, it's, so a, it's a comfort level. It's a great right. comfort level. Okay. Right. And so, also, Miss um, Holloway is very competent. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it, I think that um, we don't always get along together like creative people very often don't. But we work well together in terms of complementing each other's skills. So I'm going to take, take that to mean she's very straightforward. She was a business teacher. <laughs> I, I got that. So, but I'm, I want to move on um, to to Miss Barber. But she is. Thank you. Hey, Sharon, hey. how are you doing, Miss Barber? I'm, I'm going to mute very myself good. now. Okay. <laughs> so, similar to to Wita, uh, what was it like seeing your daughters, Olympians, Montclair sports legends, uh, you know, on the panel and being a part of something that, you know, is going to be around for a long time? What an honor. What an honor. Thank you, Betty Holloway. Thank you, Ani. Thank you for your work. Thank you for um, putting them on the panel. Well, you know, they don't live here now. They live in California. Why I don't know, but um, <laughs> they're they're just so happy and so glad that you did that for them. They're really thankful. Um, every time they come, well, you know, they love coming home. They love coming home. So every time they come back to Montclair for a visit, business, whatever, you know, it's always about, well, you know, what's going on, what's happening. Get, you know, they just love it. I mean. We live in a town and that's what it is. You, you, you just love it. So with that, I just, I, I'm just really humbled by it. And I, I just really want to thank you. You did an excellent job. Um, I just can't say more about you. The other thing I want to say is I was on the first trolley, ho uh, trolley tour. It was an amazing experience. Actually, I almost didn't get on because people were showing up that didn't have tickets that thought that they could just jump on the trolley. So I, some people left because we were telling them, well, we really don't have any seats. Well, I'm kind of happy about that because I did do the trolley. It was a it was an awesome experience. Um, at one point, one of our um, jump offs were at the, um, the theater up there on Bloomfield Avenue where we got to go in and see a short film. And, um, you know, the but the trolley had our Afri um, um, Montclair African Heritage um, banner on it. You know, we pull up in this trolley, you know, people are like, what is it? What is it? They loved it. And they were asking questions. Um, uh, how, did, how come they didn't know about it? So in saying that, hopefully we can get back to that when things get normal again. Mm -hmm. But again, I want to thank you. Uh, my girls are humbled, um, and we are too. Thank you. So, so I, I appreciate that, Cheryl. And that opens me up to come to you, Robin. Um, and, and Robin, I have two questions for you. One, we're of the same generation. Yeah. So when you saw this, right, what, what, what came up in you? Because a lot of people talk about, you know, Living, I live in Montclair, being from Montclair, and so. But when you saw it, what 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 did you think? What how did it hit you? It it hits me pretty much like a, a lot of other things hit me. I was just proud. I love being from Montclair. I mean, you know, um, it, it's something about the town that everyone seems to just have this affinity for, and it just it just made me seem proud. It makes me seem like you know we've we've done a lot in this town. And it just made me, it made me feel proud to see that, you know, the, the accomplishments and the different, you know, um, people are being recognized. It was really, it was really nice. I was ready to like, I was posting on Facebook and things like that. And I'm, you know, I'm doing a lot of the publicity like we were talking about, and I'm just trying to figure out ways during a pandemic that we can, you know, really get the word out there so people will be able to see it. 
Okay. Well, I'll be as proud as I am. <laughs> so now that, that that opens up the question to you, Ms. Holloway, because um, you were talking about this is really supposed to travel. I know right now it's in the windows at MNDC, and you know you had it up at the um, the uh, historic house on Orange Road, and so. As what are some of the other places that you're looking to put this so that people can, as, as as Sherry said, you know, be like, oh, they can see it and expose people to it. Well, um, we're right now we're looking at uh, moving it up Bloomfield Avenue on Thursday to uh, Hippolito's Tailor Shop, which is going to give it a lot of exposure with the traffic going up and down the street. And I'm hoping that people will see it and you know, as they park, that'll be a place that they say, oh, let me go see what this is. Um, the next stop is uh, hopefully we'll be displaying it down at Moso, the uh, restaurant, Zena Floyd's restaurant. And um, but before I go any further, I have to give a shout out to the Montclair History Center that did give us uh, the place for us to open up the, the panels. Right. And um, so we're open. WITA is, um, we're working on, um, through WITA, the um, Investors Bank. We're hoping that they're going to come through, but we're open for other sites. So we're still working on it and uh, looking for places to park it for, you know, a brief time. Yeah, I know. I'm uh, to um, bring it to the township to, uh, potentially have it up there because I know when we had it at town in town hall for um Rick our producer to kind of get some video shots of it I think you know I told Brian Scandalberry about it but I think to that point you know as you look through it some of the moments on there um are moments that you know many of you lived through right so and I'm thinking particularly we and Cheryl like the Washington Street YMCA Right, which everyone in the fourth ward went to, um, you know, the school desegregation, which you know was around time and things like that. But it is if you think about it, and we, Tom, I start with you. How is how important is it that those stories are? I'm going to say retold, but at least highlighted for people to to know about them. Oh, I think it's very very important. Our history is rich. Our history is so rich and and just like me, I don't I didn't even know my history, you know, with my ancestors. And to share it with everybody, and especially these locations that we want to put the displays at, um, I think it would just mesmerize people, you know, just to know how our black community played a big part in Montclair. Mm -hmm. Played yes. a big part. You know, it's funny, every time I drive down South Mountain Avenue, I see that big mansion. And, yeah. you know, so I, I I didn't have no idea who Sweet Daddy Grace was. <laughs> and, so, and so who, you know, and this is for anybody, can somebody tell me about Sweet Daddy Grace? Because other than him looking like, I'm not going to say a pimp, um, <laughs> please tell me who was he, how did he get here, if we know, and it, was that his house? Uh, he, he, uh, I'll share a little bit and I'd like for Ani to jump in because he knows a lot about Daddy Grace. Um, you know, he started his ministry in Massachusetts. Okay. Right. And he had a big congregation in Newark. And one of the things, uh, speaking about that house specifically, it was said that, well, Sweet Daddy Grace had a number of mansions around the country. And this was just one of them. And it is said that he paid cash. He didn't go into any place on a mortgage. He paid cash for that mansion when he purchased it. Of course, it caused quite an uproar uh, among the neighbors up there on um, South Mountain Avenue. And um, Apparently, he didn't pay it any attention, but his work, um, and I think Ani will be able to give us um, some details about that, his work in the community 
uh, is what is to be lauded rather than his flamboyance, mm. you know. <laughs> so, uh, Ani, would you add some information to about Daddy Grace? At the ter at, during the 1930s, during the Depression, there were a lot of uh, charismatic ministers. Um, Mary Baker Eddy is one that's very important and um, with Christian science. And um, uh, Father Divine is another one that we know about, the Father Divine Riviera Hotel down in Newark. And um, another one of the big ones was Sweet Daddy Grace. And all of them were, were all of these charismatic ministers were flamboyant. And, you know, when we think of, uh, we, we question why they were why they were as Christian ministers why they were so flamboyant well because they wanted to to attract people and they wanted to let people know that they were people who were set apart almost all prophets were flamboyant in some kind of way whether it was you know bringing down fire from heaven and, or whether it was um, wearing wearing clothes that were made out of only animal skins they all had something that was different about them that made people know who they were. And so um, we, we, we do think about the way that Daddy Grace had these long fingernails and wore expensive clothes and drove big cars. He was a manifestation of the, the, um, the prosperity that people were attracted to. You know, the, in America, the Protestant idea is that if you're good and you work hard, God will reward you. And so, of course, he was gonna buy houses, just like you know, Creflo Dollar has jet planes. If, if you are good, God is gonna reward you. And you wanna see that manifestation of those rewards. And so he, he, had, he had massive feeding programs um, during the depression when people had nothing to eat. He set up kitchens. They had shared. Um, they did. They had shared meals. They had. Um, they would share. Be, be able to share clothing and help people in the congregation out who didn't have anything. And so it attracted people. And just like any other charismatic minister, you know, black people tend to be a little more flamboyant with a little bit more style than anybody else, anyway. And so when we think about him and think about his clothes and his many houses and things like that, it's not so far different from what some other ministers have done in the way that they live, um, except that maybe um, within his congregation, the people of his congregation with their, their, um, their sharing of what they had gave back more than what some of these others do. The other interesting thing about Reverend Ike was, that, uh, Daddy Grace rather, was that he owned apartment buildings um, and around the country in the various cities where his church was located. He also owned what was the largest apartment building in New York City. And at the time, it was the largest apartment building in the world, the El Dorado Hotel. Mm, okay. So um, he, he had a talent for what he did with the money that was raised in his church. Okay. And uh, as I, in my research and, and readings, um, they said he kept wonderful properties. Um, now I uh, grew up in a little town called in Lexington, North Carolina. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. You were young. I am a yellow jacket, and I know you worked for the Les Lexington That's Dispatch. My first job. <laughs> Your first Our job. Our capital of the world. Exactly. Um, so we had a house of prayer church there, and the, they served meals there on the weekend. It was the best food that you could get in town. And of course, we didn't have a lot of black restaurants around town. And so it was the place to go to get your food on the weekend. So that was the reputation that uh, uh, another attraction and, and for the reputation that Sweet Daddy Grace had around the country, not just in Little Lexington. I know that church used to frighten me when I was a kid because you know people would dance, they'd fall out, 
it was music and um, it, it, it's an amazing experience um, to have been in his church. So, and he, he lived, he kept that house on South Mountain until he died. Wow. Well, I wouldn't mind. I, I see that house and it's, it's still magnificent. Um, so sh 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 Ms. Barber, I want to bring you back in because, you know, one of the cool things about this is that generation of Montclair and, you know, you being someone who you know my sisters and brothers and all that stuff and saw me as a baby. And now, you know, I still look at everyone as kind of like my mother or older sister. Um, I'm not that old. Well, okay, not that old. Right. Okay. But, I, you know, and, and, you know, but my point is, or yeah. what I'm trying to get to is that the whole thing of keeping folks aware of the shoulders we stand on. Ooh, yeah. Um, can you kind of just, in your words, talk about how you know you hope that that transpires with this great exhibition, this great panel and exhibit? Well, you know what? As a matter of fact, um, my girls are fifth generation born in Montclair. My husband's great grandfather was born in Montclair. So, you know, to keep it going, it's, it's very special. To the panels, um, the girls being with such prominent people, uh, black people, period, in the town. It's, 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 really, it's really an accomplishment for them. Um, and like Kawita was saying, we have a lot of history here. We have a lot of black history here. So in that Betty um, put the panel together again, things like that keep it going. You know, things like that make more people aware of what we do have here. Even the Montclair African American Festival, you know, that's brought about to keep people uh, to come together, to recognize who we are, where we came from, and that we're still here. Mm -hmm. You know, that we're still here. I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. My, um, my youngest will be graduating from the high school this year, which means that I've had a family member graduate from Montclair High every decade since my Aunt Betty in 1946. Yeah, I love it. So I that's, love it, yes. Relate to that. And then... Yeah. You know, but she said something, Betty, that I think uh, all of us would support. And then, and that's what's next, right? I mean, how do we take what you did and 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 kind of like, or do you see it as something that has legs to to take forward? Wow. Well, you know, this was, um, you know, took a lot of energy. <laughs> to uh, get everything done. And um, nothing at the moment, other than I do think we need to put this in some kind of uh, publication. Okay. We do, because um, we have people in town like Elizabeth Shepard. Are you familiar with her? Elizabeth no. Shepard? Elizabeth Shepard is an archivist and has done a yeoman's job on doing research on the African-American community in Montclair. I depended on her research, uh, the work that she had done, you know, to really pull a lot of this together. But one of the things that Jimmy um, Eason has said to me uh, that has really impacted the way that I feel about it is that uh, I feel like our history, our history, African-American history, no matter where we live, if we don't keep these stories alive, it will be almost like we never existed in that place, that we never contributed to the place where we lived. And so we have to tell our stories the way that we experienced it. It's not always, you know, a sad story because we survived. And what I find so fascinating in Montclair is you survived at a, on a different level. And it's, it's a wonderful feeling knowing um, how people have made it in this town. And it, they, were, they were international figures and national figures. 
and have made major contributions in and around the, the country. So I do think that that particular part of it needs to be uh, kept alive. And, you know, we're still working on it. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's a work in progress, I should say. Yeah, because when I read, a, when I read a one panel about Oscar Michal and work that he had done in the film industry, you know, and then I, but, but my connection, man, 55 Greenwood Avenue, you know, mm -hmm. so it's like, you know, you just think about those things. Um, and I, I it, 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 it really is to your point, a, a really tremendous opportunity for people to not only learn about you know, the history, but also become aware of names, you know, so you, oh, you yeah. see Wally Choice on there and then you see Wally Choice Community Center. You see Aubrey Lewis on there and you see the Aubrey Lewis Athletic Complex. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of like, you know, I think that, A, I'm sure when schools get back, this is going to be something that every school will want. Um, I, I think that, you know, as you said, once you get out of COVID, be much easier to transfer it all around town because um, I, I, you guys just did a really, really great job. I want to I want to thank you for that. And before we close out, um, what I really like is for each of you to just tell me something on there that or about it that you feel you would really like to expand on. Even if it's an individual person or an event around this, something like that. And, and I'm going to start with you, Rita. Everything on the panels, um, we need to um, elaborate more. I mean, we were talking about going into phase two eventually to bring in more history because of course we couldn't cover everything. But I would like to piggyback on the trolley car. Sherry speaking about our trolley car tour. There was a um, era in the newspaper. Um, we tried to post it a month prior to the ride to purchase tickets. It didn't get posted until a week prior to the trolley car. Oh. Yes. So when Sherry was talking about she almost got kicked off of the trolley car, it was because the people other than our color read the newspaper and they were all lined up to, to come to the trolley. They thought they could purchase tickets right then and there. So wow. I think once COVID is over that we can do this again, the trolley car tour. And I think by that time we can have phase two with more information of our history. But I think we're gonna need two trolley cars. <laughs> <laughs> so the trolley cars is your thing, all right. Uh, Miss Barber, what would you say was something that um, that sticks out for you? Um, I really like the trolley cars. Um, to keep our history at more people, because there's a lot of people here. Betty, you did a fabulous job. I just, the trolley car, everything, you just did a fabulous job. But more history um, so that everybody can know. Everybody can know. I also like to um, uh, talk about Montclair African Heritage Festival. I think that's a, a really good place that we need to expand more on the history because that's what we do pretty much every year. That's what we try to do anyway. When okay, COVID's okay. over and we're back to normal, more of our history here needs to be told. I'm very proud of it, very proud of it. That's great. Um, Ani, if you had to talk about something that's part of this that you'd like to expand upon, what would it be? Um, on the tour, we had uh, people from all, all walks of life and young people and old people. And um, we had a representative from the Montclair newspaper and she came in and she uh, wrote a story about the tour. And she said to me, um, this history is so important and people don't know about it. And I said, well, you know, African-American history is really American history. And we have a, the, we, we are now in what we, the shortest month of the year, which is African-American History Month. We don't get 31 days like in January. <laughs> we get 28 days. And it really, people, until we get to the point 
in this country where we understand that African-American history, American Indian history, Puerto Rican discovery, um, all of this history is all the same history. Mm -hmm. We should not really have to break out African-American history um, to, in order for it to be highlighted. African-American history is American history. We all have, all of us who are in this country, who have been in this country for such a long time, have made contributions. You know, it's every one of those, you know, it's every one of those, those uh, every grain of sand makes the beach. You know, we don't notice it when they, when a few thousand pounds go out to sea, but every grain of sand makes the beach. And so when we think of a beach, we don't think of individual grains of sand. We think about all the grains of sand together making the beach. And so because of our, the, the, our, our history of discrimination and of being left out and being a part of his story, not history, his story, we have to do things like highlighting our story. So but until we can highlight it enough that it becomes integrated with his story and it makes it into our story, we need to continue to do things like that. But as we look at Daddy Grace, we see him as a part of a bigger movement. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. We see him as part of a bigger movement that carries on to some good ones and some bad ones. Sweet Daddy Grace and Joel Osteen. I mean, we, but they're all part of the same thing, you know? To get to a point where we're not, where we can separate them, not by race, but by what they did. You, you, you see what I'm saying? No, I, 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 that's a great point and a great way to um, explain. I like the fact that, you know, we are American history. So I appreciate that. Uh, Ms. Curry, the one who has the, 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 the challenge of getting this all out to everybody and seeing it. What, what, you know, what is your um, lasting impression? Well, I mean, I'm just, I just want to get it out so that everyone can see it. Um, I'm going to go back to the trolley tour, which I unfortunately was not able to get on because it was sold out. So I would like to be able to get on that. And like Wita said, I want to have two trolleys um, <laughs> because, I mean, I went on the tour, uh, the, the Montclair History Center's tour. Um, throughout the town a couple years ago, and that was really great. So I could imagine just seeing something um, focusing on African American history would be really phenomenal. So I'm really looking forward to that, and I do want to have the trolleys because I think that's really cool. Um, but I want to I want to get it out there to the masses. I want to promote it. I want to I want to um, you know go to every ward because I'm sure there's history in every ward, and we can just inform, we have a lot of new people here, and I want them to know about our town and about the contributions. Okay, well, I wanna say thank you um, to every one of you for participating, taking time out of your busy schedules to do this because, you know, listening to you all, you know, I can't tell you what the, I cannot tell you what the Washington Street Y meant to me as a kid, you know, from church league basketball, learning how to swim, you know, that was a place, safe haven right for us and it was just it was the why but then miss holloway when you brought up calvin jones i mean that that's like oh man you know you're really really coming back to to the ward you know not the fourth ward but the ward and you know i could see mr jones now riding making that left off elmwood ave on the mission street going back around so you know those are stories that you know can't be shown but the fact that you have a photo of them you know, when people see that, they'll just remember it. So, and I just want to again say that this has been a great opportunity to talk about the history of the Black person in Montclair, the African-American history in Montclair. And it's not going to be the last time we talk about it. Um, I'm lucky that tomorrow I'm going to be doing, well, tomorrow I'm going to be doing a recording with some of the original members of the Black Student Union. Um, I got Nod Bay, who's Tip, Glenn Davis, got four or five different names, um, uh, John McGill, uh, Joanna Wright, uh, Shirley Strickland, and so, and Hatari. 
Uh, so we're all going to be talking similar to this, but they're going to, you know, give the, the origins of the Black Student Union and, and what they were about and how they did things and, you know, what was their whole story and things like that. So, you know, as long as I'm fourth ward counselor Montclair, I consider it a duty of mine to make sure that individuals like yourselves are highlighted for the work that you do, the effort that you do, but really your contributions to this town. Because I know I wouldn't be where I am without any of you. And that goes from just seeing you, who you are and what you mean to the community. So I wanna thank you all again for participating. And I look forward to this becoming that exhibit that travels to all wards and to getting those two trolleys that everyone says, because obviously one wasn't enough. So thank you very much and everyone have a good night. Bye. Thank you, thank David. You. Thank you.